Welcome back. In this part, I'm going to show you how to make an illustration using SVJator's built-in library, and then we're going to start animating some of its parts. Let's jump straight in. All right, so let's start to create our illustration here. Today, I want to make a folder with paper inside, like a, like a paper folder with a piece of paper inside of it. And then we're gonna have a few more elements that are gonna go on the folder itself and the, the actual document that we have inside of it. So I previously uploaded a couple of SVGs into my library here. So I'm going to insert those two and maybe I downloaded these from somewhere else or I created them on a, a different tool. But as long as they're SVGs or actual images, I mean, in this case, you wanna work with SVGs uh, to be able to change its properties. Uh, so as long as they're SVGs, we're all good here. So I'm going to insert them. And they're actually getting inserted in, in different sizes, but it's all good. We can just uh, match the, the size of, of the folder that we have in the background. Like we have like the, we have the back of the folder and then we have the front side of the folder. So let's just make sure that those are the same size there. And I'm noticing right now that this line is very much not <laughs> uh, aligned. It looks very weird there. So I'm gonna do my, I'm gonna, with my selection tool the or the note tool here, I'm gonna bring this down to the middle where it actually looks like it's aligned. That looks a lot better, okay. So that's one of the ways you can uh, insert SVGs or like that's a way you can insert SVGs in SVGator. But if you wanted to keep working on your illustration, you don't have to download it from anywhere else. We actually have a very extensive library of objects and elements that we can use to improve our illustration here. So I also want my folder to have like a, like a label here, maybe with some with some text on it. So I'm gonna use this rounded square that, that I have here. And I'm just gonna click on it and it's gonna get inserted. Now here we can see the radius is 6.2. Maybe let's change that to six just to make it more uh, like, a, like a full number there. But if I change this with my, with my regular transform tool, this is what it's gonna look like. I don't want my corners to look like that. So I'm actually going to transform this into a, a, a path. So we can do either click here, right click it and then com convert to path or we can do shift command P. That turns it into a path and that gives us a lot of more freedom in terms of being able to change any parts of this shape. So we can like control the different nodes using the node tool. So I'm just gonna uh, make it a little bit less tall like that. And then I wanna change it to, to white. And then inside of it, I want something that looks like text. It's not gonna be actual text, but you know, another way to insert something that's just like a line, we can do, we can use the pen tool. So I'm gonna use my pen tool and maybe this one can be like three or maybe that's too much, maybe like two. And then we can also change the line ends to be rounded. I think that looks a lot better. And if you're noticing that I have like these red lines that appear whenever I'm moving something, it's because I have this option turned on here. So enable snapping. So here, for example, a snap to objects. If I duplicate this one by holding option and dragging down, you can see that it's gonna show me where it's aligned right in the middle with not only the this shape that I created here, but also but also like the middle of, of the shape that's in the background. So or well, I think that might actually be the it's it's letting you know that it's aligned with the with the actual background. So that's very useful when you want to um when you want to duplicate things, for example, or you want to make sure that you are aligning things perfectly to, to in this case, the, 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 the other object, because I don't want it to, to be like over here, right? And if I turn that off and I try to duplicate this one, 
And I can move it all over and it's not really letting me know where it's aligning with, with anything. So that is definitely helpful to know. Now I want this path to be just a little bit shorter. So I'm just going to do that. Make sure I have my, my snapping on. So I don't have to do anything fancy to resize this. This is just going to let me know where, where it's aligned. But in case you, uh, you misaligned your elements. You can always select both of them by clicking one and then shift. And then you have your alignment options up here. So I'm going to align both to the left. I'm going to move this one down a little bit and then I'm going to group them with command G. And then I'm also going to select the background here. So I have all three elements selected and I can also align them in, in reference to each other. In case I wanted to, for some reason, align this group right here, right in the middle of my, of my canvas. If, if I'm not selecting any other object, it's going to automatically align to the middle of the canvas. In this case, that's definitely not what I want. So I'm just going to leave it like this. And I'm going to group my, uh, my three elements together. So there we have it. We have like a little sticker for our folder. Now, the next thing that I want is a piece of paper that kind of like pops up a little bit from our folder and that's going to be like the main animation here. So maybe our paper can be something like this. And then from the beginning, we can see it a little bit. So we're going to do like a, like an unfolding animation later. So for now, I'm just going to duplicate it, con uh, command C, command V. And then the top part here is going to be white. And then I'm going to leave the other one gray. So obviously I do want my paper to go in the middle of the folder. So I'm going to group together these two I'm going to do command G and then I can use a keyword shortcut to send it to the back. So I can do command arrow down and that's going to put my paper uh, behind or like in between my two pieces of the, of the folder. I'm also going to go ahead and, and group together my, my label here. I'm going to call it, I'm going to label it label <laughs> and then group it with my file front. So they always stay together. So I can either go here to group or command G. Now let's make the first animation uh, for this folder. I want this folder to kind of like open up, like it, it's going to get skewed a little bit. It's going to have like this kind of effect, like grabbing here and like opening up to that side. And then the back side is going to do the opposite. So something like this. And to do that, it's going to be pretty easy with our skew animation here. So I'm going to select my file front or actually my group of file front. Let me change that to file front. And I'm gonna add a skew animation. I'm gonna insert the check mark first. Now the last part of this, uh, what I'm gonna do right now of the shapes that I'm gonna add right now is going to be a check mark, which I know we have one in the library here. So I don't have to create it from scratch. And then I'm gonna change that to green. If you're not seeing under appearance, any kind of fill color or stroke color, it's probably because, uh, there, there's some kind of group and then you have to change the, the color individually there, or, you know, you can do it at the same time, but you can change it individually as well. So we have our check mark, which we're not going to really need right now. And I'm going to lock this and then the paper here because I'm going to work on that animation a little later, but for now, I, I just want my file front and my file back to do uh, a skewing animation. So I want this part to be my, my skewing animation to be something like, like this it goes like that. So it has like that, um, that effect of looking like it's opening to the side. But instead of animating anchor points moving or anything like that, which is not really possible with the skew animation, all I have to do is add a skew animation here. We can either click skew right here or shift K. And then I'm going to make sure that my origin point is down here because I only want the top part to move to the right. So I'm going to do minus five there. So it moves to the right. 
And I just want to show you real quick what would happen if I had my origin point in the middle. So if I have it on the, if I had it right in the middle, it's going to skew to minus five. It's going to skew like the whole thing instead of only the, the, the top part. So that's the power of using the, the origin point in different locations. So I'm going to do minus five and uh, I'm going to do the same for the file back layer that I have here. So I'm going to add a skew animation and that's going to be five. That's actually going to be what happens at like half a second. So I'm going to move my, my keyframes to half a second and I'm going to kind of like undo the, the skew. And so I'm just going to bring that back to zero. You can do this like this, or you can do, you can insert the initial keyframe at first and then do the, the skewing animation, or you can do it the way I just did it, which was doing the skewing animation first or the skewing uh, keyframe first and then bringing it down to zero. It's exactly the same. So as long as it, it's actually doing the animation there, we're all good. Now I have a problem here because I forgot to move the, the origin point of my, of my back part of the file. So I just have to move that origin point so it doesn't, we, we can avoid that problem there. Now, after my file opens up like that, I wanted to like go away. I wanted to move this way. So both of my layers here to move this way and disappear. So I'm going to do, I'm going to select both at the same time. And even though they're separate elements, I could, you could say like, why don't you group them if they're going to do exactly the same animation? And the reason is because I have my paper and if I group the file front and file back, and then I put the paper in that group too, everything is going to animate together when I move it uh, away from, from the center here. So that's not what I want. So I'm just going to animate them individually, but I can actually select them both at the same time and, and add the same animation to both. So I'm going to do an position animation here and then add, that's going to start when it's done opening like that. And then at one second, it's going to be gone to like the, the right, to, to the left side. So let's just make sure that we have both layers selected. Um, to select layers like this, if you click on the first one and then click, com uh, press command, you can select any other layer, even if there's something in the middle, because if you do, for example, shift, it's just going to select all of the layers that you have uh, under the one that you selected first. But if you do, you select the first one here and then hit command and leave it pressed, you can select any layers in any kind of uh, like any, any order. So if I'm here at one second, I can go ahead and like move the position of my folder away from the center. And then I don't necessarily have to like bring it all the way out. What I'm going to do instead is add an opacity animation. So with both layers still selected, I'm going to animate its opacity. It's going to start at a hundred percent. And then I'm going to add a keyframe here, keyframe here. And then, um, I can do 0%. You can either do it like one by one or you can even do copy paste if it's exactly the same. So in this case, just, let's just do both uh, separately because you know, it's just two layers, but it's useful when you are trying to change uh, a bunch of different things. So let's just make sure that we actually change the opacity here for this keyframe for the back uh, of the folder. And that way our folder disappears, like opens up and then disappears from, from the view. And then at that point, we're going to start working on the animation for the, for the, uh, for the paper and the check mark. And there we have it. We have created an illustration from scratch using SVGator's built-in library. We have also started animating part of the folder. And then in the next part, we're going to finish up animating the rest of its parts. And I'm going to show you a few new animation techniques. I'll see you there.